Listen to this before you buy your next Arduino board. It will help you a lot. When we start with Arduino project like home automation or robotics, we usually buy a ready-made Arduino board, plug in a USB cable and upload a sketch. It works like magic, but we never really see what is happening inside, right? Now, I want to show you why building our own Arduino board is a great idea and what parts you need and what the overall process looks like. Don't worry, this is not an advanced electronic class. To build a DIY Arduino board, we only need a small set of core parts. At the center, we have Atmega 328 microcontroller. You can think of this as the brain of the Arduino. It stores your program, reads the pin, and controls everything in your circuit. For the brain to work properly, it needs a steady heartbeat. And that comes from something called crystal oscillator, usually a 16 MHz one. The crystal is a tiny metal that can vibrate at a fixed frequency and tells the microcontroller how fast to run. Along with that, we have two small capacitors that help the crystal start and stay stable. The reset line lets us restart the microcontroller cleanly when we upload new code or when something goes wrong. Believe it or not, those are the main important things. Around this, we add a voltage regulator to get a stable 5V, a few capacitors to smooth the power, and some resistors and LED for power and status. And we can also use header pins so we can plug in our sensors and wires easily. The tools you need are also very simple. A basic soldering iron, a breadboard with jumper wires, and a cheap multimeter are enough to start with this one. The breadboard lets you test the core circuit before you commit to a PCB. The multimeter helps you check for shorts and correct voltages. All the parts, the Atmega 328, crystal, resistors, capacitors, voltage regulators and headers are easy to find on online shop or in local electronic shops. And guys, just to let you know, this video mainly explains why you should build your own Arduino board and to give you a big picture of the process. The complete step-by-step -step tutorial, including the PCB diagram, soldering and live testing will be in the next one. If you want the board to look neat and professional, you can design a small PCB and order it from a PCB manufacturer. Always start with a breadboard. We place the Atmega 328, connect the 16 MHz crystal and capacitors, add the reset resistor and hook up a 5V and ground. Then we connect one LED with a resistor to the pin that will be used for blink example. I will give you the complete information in the description down below so that you can simply replicate yourself. If this simple setup works on a breadboard, we know the heart of the board is working correctly. Only then do we move on to soldering. Now, let me tell you something that might be really interesting for you if you are really into electronics and robotics. What if I tell you that you can start learning PCB designing and circuit drawing totally free from beginner level to advanced level? Yes. Altium has a free program for students called Altium Student Lab. If you have a school or university email, you can simply enroll and follow proper courses that teach you how real engineers design electronics. You learn step by step, you get guided lessons, and at the end, you can get a certificate that is actually recognized by the industry. So if you are studying electronics or want to get into hardware design, check the link in the description and join for free. Alti focuses on helping engineers, makers, and teams design electronics in a way that is organized, shareable, and ready for manufacturing. Now, what about programming? For the chip to behave like an Arduino Uno in the Arduino IDE, it needs something called Arduino Bootloader. Sometimes you can buy Atmega 328 chip with the bootloader already installed. If not, we can use another Arduino as a programmer and burn the bootloader ourselves. After this step, our custom board is basically an Arduino Uno in a different shape. To upload sketches, we use a USB to serial adapter like an FTDI module. The adapter connects to the RX and TX pin of Atmega 328 and appears as a COM port on the computer. In the Arduino IDE, we select Arduino Uno, choose the correct port, open the blink example and simply upload it. If our LED starts blinking on the custom board, that is the moment when we know we did everything right. Once you have built one custom Arduino board, many new possibilities open up. 
You can make special boards just for robots with extra headers for servos and motor drivers. You can create very small boards that fit inside tight enclosures for IoT sensors. So the possibilities are endless. Now let's see the full build step by step so you can follow along and make your own DIY Arduino at home.